the set of Enola Holmes. Netflix has recently released all around the world a fresh new movie named Enola Holmes, which is being distributed by Netflix. In the cinematic adaptation of the character, Millie Bobby Brown plays Enola Holmes, who is Sherlock Holmes' sister. The writer Nancy Springer is the one who is responsible for the character's introduction into the world for the very first time in her book series. However, before the movie was made available on Netflix, the estate of Arthur Conan Doyle filed a complaint claiming that it infringed their copyright and harmed their brand. The case was filed before the movie was even made available online. The case names as defendants both Netflix and Legendary Pictures, as well as the author of the book series, Nancy Springer, and book publishers Penguin Random House. As a result of the fact that Sherlock Holmes is generally accepted to be part of the public domain, a lot of people were taken aback by this news. Despite this, the Arthur Conan Doyle estate stated that the Enola Holmes tales do not qualify to be part of the public domain, because of one specific aspect of the stories. So here's all you need to know about the explosive events that have been taken on behind the scenes of Enola Holmes. The Plot Before we get into the controversy that surrounded the filming of Enola Holmes, let's have a look at the movie's storyline so you know what it's all about. Since the last time we saw Enola, she has matured into a young woman who runs her own private investigation firm and has just achieved the success of cracking her very first case, following in the footsteps of her elder brother, Sherlock. Nevertheless, not everyone is persuaded. Enola is irritated because she must deal with a steady stream of customers who do not believe or trust her and who seem to prefer the investigative aid of her brother who is more prominent. As a result, Enola does not currently have a case to her name, but things aren't going swimmingly for Henry Cavill's interpretation of Sherlock either. Enola is left to cope with her own failing company in addition to her brother's downward spiral into hopelessness because he is perplexed by the most recent mystery and seems to have been driven to disillusionment by it. That is, until one day, a little girl walks into Enola's agency with a desperate request to assist in locating her sister who has gone missing. Enola dives headfirst into yet another escapade because she recognizes the potential in this mystery to serve as a showcase for her own investigative abilities and to further strengthen her standing as a really accomplished private investigator. Soon after, Enola finds herself thrust into a perilous new underworld that takes her all across London from CD factories to lively music halls and all the way up to the highest levels of society. Although the trailer gives us a better look at Enola and the various characters she must encounter, rather than the specifics of the mystery itself, we can be certain that the glimpses of masquerade balls, sword fights, exploding phone boxes, and the possibility of young romance all present plenty of new challenges for Enola, with plenty of hijinks and mayhem to spare. Why Conan Doyle sued Netflix and Enola Holmes for misappropriating his work When the Enola Holmes movie was uploaded on Netflix, the Arthur Conan Doyle estate claimed that the series plagiarized information from 10 of the Sherlock Holmes novels. The estate claimed that the Enola Holmes series had plagiarized the aforementioned works in their narratives. Since the year 2006, when Nancy Springer's works intended for teenagers and young adults were first published in book form, there has never been any indication of a problem with them. That is, up to the point when the advertising for the movie arrived. After this moment, the character of Sherlock Holmes in the story started to take shape in a way that was understandable. According to the complaint that was submitted as part of the legal action, Sherlock did not display any emotions and created the appearance that he did not care about other people throughout the bulk of the novels that he wrote. Despite this, Sherlock consistently demonstrates love and care for his younger sister throughout the whole of both the film and the books. Because of this issue, the Arthur Conan Doyle estate had a problem with both the stories and the movie. Arthur Conan Doyle created the fictional character of Sherlock Holmes and used him in a total of 56 short stories and four novels that he wrote between the years 1887 and 1927. At this point in time, the great majority of those stories, as well as the character, have been made available inside the public domain. However, there were still 10 short stories that were covered by the 95-year copyright and the protection for the last of those stories won't expire until the year 2023. In these stories, Sherlock Holmes matures and develops into a more complex character. The case brought by Doyle's estate said that the deceased man had suffered the loss of both his son and his brother within a period of just four months, both of which had taken place while World War I was in progress. It was said in the complaint that it was no longer sufficient for the Holmes character to possess the most brilliant, logical, and analytical mind in the tale he also needed to be able to solve the most difficult puzzles. It was very necessary for Holmes to be human. In order for the protagonist to achieve success, they need to work on cultivating human ties and empathy. He matured into a person who is capable of friendship. He was able to articulate his sentiments well. 
he began treating ladies with a greater amount of respect. The estate of Sherlock Holmes claimed that the movie and book series violated works that were still protected by copyright by presenting Holmes as respectful toward his younger sister. This allegation was based on the fact that the works were still in circulation. The reasons behind the controversy caused by the Enola Holmes lawsuit. This specific case gave rise to a great deal of controversy as a consequence of the fact that the Arthur Conan Doyle estate had already begun a separate legal procedure against Enola Holmes. Leslie Klinger was planning to publish his own Sherlock Holmes anthology in 2013, but the estate of Sherlock Holmes sought to stop him. The estate maintained that even if the bulk of the book's copyright had run out, it should still have some influence on who writes stories about the character, even if the rights to those stories had run out. Judge Richard Posner of the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals threw out the case because he noted that, when a narrative passes into the public domain, plot elements including characters protected by the expired copyright become fair game for follow-on writers. This caused the case to be dismissed. Because of this, the corporation was successful in its legal challenge. The estate of Sherlock Holmes did not allow this to stop them from initiating legal action against Netflix and Springer in regard to the way in which the series portrayed Holmes. This occurred as a result of another decision made by the same court, which found that the later stories reflect aspects of Holmes and Watson's relationship that does not exist in the earlier ones. The early tales don't even mention Watson. It isn't until later books that we learn, for example, that Sherlock Holmes' attitude about dogs has evolved over time and that he has grown an affection for them. We also don't learn until later novels that Watson has been married twice. Because these additional elements are, we may suppose, original in the expansive meaning that the term carries in copyright law, they are protected by the copyrights that have not yet expired on the more recent tales. This led to a controversy about whether or not the copyright of the later books was put in jeopardy by the fact that Sherlock Holmes looked after a sister who was never included in either the original adventures or the following ones. The individual who brought the lawsuit contended that the copyright regulations had to be construed so as to include the principle of respecting women. In their defense, the defendants in the case stated that copyright law does not allow the ownership of generic concepts like warmth, kindness, empathy, or respect, even as expressed by a public domain character which, of course, belongs to the public, not plaintiff. This was the reasoning that they presented in the lawsuit. The case was never brought before a court, and three months after it had been filed, the party struck a settlement that resulted in it being dismissed with prejudice since it was never presented before a judge. This suggests that both parties came to an agreement to abandon the litigation, but neither party accepted that they were in the wrong in the legal dispute. There was no information provided on the reason for the dismissal. Nevertheless, there is always the potential that money changed hands in order to allow Netflix to show the movie without the Arthur Conan Doyle estate creating any extra issues. The copyright has one more year to run, and according to the timetable that Netflix has released, the second episode of the Enola Holmes series will make its appearance on the streaming platform on November 4th, 2022. Thanks for watching this video. Click the subscribe button and see you in the next video.